Brother Richard. And <clears throat> today <clears throat> we are <clears throat> opening our discussion for whatever it is that you feel you may want uh, to uh, pursue, whether it's a clarification of a principle we've discussed <clears throat> or opening a question we haven't discussed. <clears throat> the floor is now open. Type of worship, which they're joining in. And as the level continues, they desire to express beyond what the human can, so they'll deviate into something else. Right. Just a continuous uh, expansion of worship. I'm thinking of the four beasts who stand before the throne, mm. constantly saying, holy, 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 doing nothing but worship, 24-7. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I imagine that's what, that's what they were created to do. Yes. And it makes perfect sense. Yes. yes. But, but I think, in general, all created angels have part of their conditioning, if I can use that word, to worship God. Oh, sure. It's, it's something that <coughs> is innate yeah. to life in uh, the eternal state, at that, in, the, in the divine level. Mm. Worship is an expression of love. Yeah. And it comes and it intensifies at different levels. And it's enjoyable to everybody. Everybody. I remember that vision I had. It was a night vision where I'm standing in front of this light, this glorious radiance. And my arms are up, and I'm expressing my love. I don't know it's the Father. I'm expressing my love, and it's being reciprocated. He's expressing his love. And it is so desirable and appreciative and joyous. You don't want to be anywhere else. Yeah. Hmm. And I look, and I know I don't look. I don't never get my eyes off of the light, but I know that there's millions of people around me hmm. doing the same thing. One day we're all going to experience that. <clears throat> you won't want, you will not want it to stop. Hmm. Praise the Lord. I believe it is a reality you enter into and you leave out. And periodically, you, uh, because you're in a plurality of existence, right. you're going to go from one thing <clears throat> into another thing where things are happening, you're participating, you're now aware of the participation. Right. And then you come into another state where everyone's worshiping, you're entering in. This is the way life is expressed at the highest levels. <clears throat> Consistently harmonious, never ending, <clears throat> joyous. You're experiencing peace, love, and joy simultaneously. Mm. And <clears throat> each thing that you, that you receive is a, a color in the light spectrum. So as you're experiencing, say, joy, you're, you're experiencing a brilliant, uh, it might be a, uh, <clears throat> uh, a green or a purple light emanating from you and around you, coupled with, <clears throat> say, peace, which is, uh, <clears throat> might be a, uh, <clears throat> a purple color, all this light emanating at the same time and the light represents a state of existence mm. and the fullness of the state of existence you're going to emanate this white light because it's encompassing everything at the same time so it's life there is so beyond what you could experience in linear in linear existence it, it, you can't you couldn't describe can't be compared yeah. no yeah. jonesy the last month or so I've been feeling, you know, well, I, I'm always worshiping when I think about, okay, I'm on my way to somewhere and I don't, I know how to get there and everything. So then I'll either I'll get my, my song sheet, which is right here in between my seats and then I'll, and I'll sing worship song or I just, I'll just verbatim sing a worship song as I'm driving. Mm -hmm. So now I noticed that my, as I'm singing, it's not singing, it's worshiping, and I, I'm, in, I'm in tension. My intention is I am worshiping, I'm not just singing, I'm worshiping. And I have this, this feeling around me. Now, I'm wondering, is that 
my my spirit or my soul maturing or is it the reality around me is changing because I know my the angels are around me they're with me so as I'm worshiping because I have I have it's a, it's a it's a subtle subtle you know thing that I'm talking about but I can sense a, a something's different hmm. either I'm more committed or I'm maturing or the reality around me is changing because maybe the viewers, the the the, peop- the the angels that are around me, I don't know what it is. So, what, what or, or both. Or both, right? <clears throat> what you're doing is you're changing your state of existence to a higher level. Mm-hmm. Where you're becoming aware of things you wouldn't be aware of if you weren't worshiping. Praise the Lord. That's why it talks about <clears throat> praise. God inhabits the praises of His people, because when you're when you're in a state of adoration, spiritual, mm. you're taking your spirit to a higher level in which you're meaning <clears throat> God. He's not going to be on a level of dissonance like what you have around here. Mm-hmm. You want to be, meet with him, you go to his level, and then you commune in harmony, and then you can go to higher and higher and higher levels depending upon how you desire to receive things that you're feeling on that level you're not it's not a question of your doing something you're changing your state of being when you do that okay literally what 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 it turned into as, as you just now mentioned it's not the state of doing it's being i am going about doing this one because i i want to do it and i want to please my father but I am at the same time experiencing something at the same. That's why I mentioned it to you, and I and I like the way you guys are talking to me about what it, what it is. I'm starting to understand that I can change the reality. Mm-hmm. I can change realities. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I'm so much looking forward to doing that. To where when I'm at the gym. I'm beyond the extra cycle. I'm overseeing the whole gym, and I can see everybody doing their thing. I will start thinking about the Holy Spirit, and I'll say, "Fill this place, fill this place in Jesus' name." And I'll just, I start worshiping inside of me, knowing that I'm doing it some somehow or another. It's happening. Either it's just, it's filled immediately as I'm saying it, or it's being filled gradually. I don't know, but I know it is. Something's happening. And I'm saying to those that are Christians in here, let them sense <coughs> it's time to get real. It's, it's a, mm-hmm. Let's get close with the Lord. Mm-hmm. Let's look into this, you know. And I just, so I go about doing that. Because, but instead of me feeling like I'm doing something, I'm just I'm being a conduit by which I'm making <coughs> available by filling the place up with the exactly. Holy Spirit. For them to partake if, if they want to. And exactly. It's, it's, it's just a, it's an interesting thing. This is where I'm going through now. And I know that at some point in time, I'm going to be able to do that. Yes. Yes. Unto God's grace and glory. Not yes. My, not my own doing, but because of he who is in me. Yes. Amen. What we have been discussing mm-hmm. deals with... <clears throat> The realities that we're entering into. <clears throat> Everything we said will change. We're living, we're living in a linear, pseudo-reality. It's not real. It's not permanent. But people, because this is all they know, this is the only existence that they're comfortable with, they know anything about, are not prepared for the times just ahead in which this pseudo-reality is going to give way to a, a state of existence that will transcend life as it's known here. <clears throat> the ability to understand is going to be very limited to people who are not prepared for the new states. I use the plural states of existence that are going to be imparted 
in this uh, <coughs> this pseudo existence. It's all based basically off of a lie. Mm. Everything that people have grown to believe in is based off of a non-reality. The Bible gives us this understanding that <coughs> if <coughs> the things that a person believes in cannot stand the test of truth, they're living in a non-truthful state of existence, which is always open to shattering, always open to destruction, always open to <clears throat> a temporary shift in uh, concluding. For instance, matter of fact, open your Bible, let's see some examples of this. Luke, 21st chapter. Looking at distinctive occurrences in which reality, as men know it, will cease to exist. Luke, 21st chapter. And... <coughs> I'm going to start in verse 25, verse 26. People are going to be going about their daily existence thinking that uh, life is going to continue. There's no reason to um, feel <coughs> intimidated or frightful. These things are going to happen suddenly, and men are not going to be prepared for it. 25, there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars. Upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, roaring. Suddenly the creation is going to experience upheaval. Suddenly. Earthquakes. Uh, <clears throat> the heavens suddenly going dark. The sun blacking out. The moon blacking out. People in total darkness. Then verse 26. Man's heart's failing them. Mm -hmm. For fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. And note two statements. Men's hearts feeling them for fear. Why? Because the world that they believed was so immune to change has suddenly experienced radical change. Mm -hmm. And they're going to see things coming out of the heavens. And this is going to be something that the human mind will not be able to deal with if it has not been prepared. Men saw us feeling them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The word powers there talks about magistrates, principalities. It's talking about they're going to see intelligences raining down from the earth. They're going to see things coming into man's vision that they never knew existed beyond imagination. And the, the mind is not going to be able to <laughs> endure this this reality <coughs> what kind of numbers percentage wise do you imagine the the, the men's hearts failing them accounts for the deaths of humanity millions. at this time millions across the world millions. Yeah. like many many millions yeah, they're going to be running in panic thinking it's the end of the world yeah. nobody's going to be able to give an explanation it's going to happen suddenly this is the way god makes his entrance into the secondary creation mm. Uh, this is just one instance of this reality shift. Turn sure. to Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51, verse 6. <clears throat> Lift up your eyes to the heavens and look upon the earth beneath. For the heavens shall vanish away like smoke, and the earth shall wax old like a garment, and they that dwell therein shall die in like manner. But my salvation shall be forever, and my righteousness shall not be abolished. So what you're looking at here is another instance 
of Nance perceived reality suddenly disappearing <clears throat> in a um, very brief period of time. The world that men thought was so permanent and so um, changeless is going to radically alter. Now when it talks about the heavens vanishing away, what is it referring to? Well, if you look at Isaiah 50, <clears throat> verse 3, you'll see the construct that's being spoken about here. Isaiah 50, verse 3. Mm -hmm. I clothe the heavens with blackness, and I make sackcloth your covering. So he's talking about the sky as you permanently, currently see it. At night, it's black. There's no light. What is it? It's a space-time garment that God has placed over the secondary creation that men believe is permanent. Well, because men basically cannot go beyond it. It's what they call space. It's what they spend a lot of time exploring and trying to explain the functioning of it. It has specific properties. It has a way in which it operates. <clears throat> you can go into it. You can uh, experience its properties. It's a vacuum. It's a, uh, a region in which <clears throat> the human race has to have protection. Otherwise, they can't exist in it. You die because you can't sustain your bodily functions. But it's temporary. <clears throat> The, our science has never considered it anything but being permanent. People don't believe there's anything beyond it. And uh, they base their total existence on its permanency. Will millennial man have the same uh, response to the effects of the heavens and the earth vanishing away in the same way that man at this point has when the whole thing disappears, when the sacrifice is No, because they won't have that experience. Millennial man will see the heavens as they actually are. Plus, he would have been taught, I presume, what's going to happen He will with know that because of the <coughs> teachers, he will know the whole true history. Right, but I mean, when the earth vanishes and the heavens vanish, mm -hmm. heaven and earth will, will pass away, but my words will, will, will forever stay. Mm. They'll be expecting that thing, is what, is what I'm no. asking. No? no? But then why wouldn't they have the same response as men at this point? Because they're going to die. They won't have time. I see. Interesting. It's going to happen instantaneously. Those, the only ones that will know about this are the teachers mm. and those who are open to receive it. But they, just like the people here, are going to be caught up in a reality they believe is going to be perpetual. Why? Because they <clears throat> basically are not prone to continue to pursue truth that's a that's a function of the human race yes <clears throat> all right brother jones you've answered this question many times i want you to, want to revisit it because i know it's going to prompt more questions out of both of us mr jones we know that the the utterances that we are making are from memory of what we have learned during this Adamic period of our lives, well, this physical. So the written word will no longer be available during the millennium. It'll all be orated from, from man to man, okay? So there is the whole structure of academia out the door. Now it's speaking about the, the unseen, speaking about the spiritual, and, and its many and varied ramifications and inclusions and explanations. And, you know, I'm just going on and on and on because I don't know how to, how to stop here. But From childhood, when, when a baby is, can hear and understand a language, whatever language that is that we're going to be speaking, it's spiritual. We're, we're going to be teaching spiritual. How do you, what do you start off with? Well, the difference between then and now has to do with the capacity of man to perceive and understand. Man perceives and understands 
<clears throat> only through his intellect, but he can see, feel, hear, taste, smell. Mm -hmm. He's been programmed to do that. Although he is a binary, pluralistic being, because of the Luciferian influence, he has limited himself to the senses. And in doing that, <clears throat> he has li literally chained himself to a belief that does not incorporate truth. And limited to, to, to spiritual, to physical. To the temporary, temporary yeah. pseudo reality. Man could know what you're talking about now if he were open to receive it. I'm talking about Christians that have the spirit in them. The spirit is God. God sees things radically different from man. God desires to impart those things to man. Man, being a fallen being who is in rebellion against his creator, having, talking about Christians, dual nature. The only way he can receive reality is if he purpose, purposely makes himself open to receive it. Mm -hmm. In his stubbornness, he doesn't do that. He relies upon his fallen nature, which in essence, if you rely upon that, is going to leave you in limitation. Let me ask you another question. Members of the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. How many members are there, Mr. Jones? The body of Christ? Yes. Two, well. So now I we, was going to say two billion people yeah, yeah. profess to be Christians, but a minuscule amount. So we see in Scripture where Christ is the head. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now we have all the other members that are not specifically. I know you you would know if they're being defined in any way, shape, or form. Well, the arm, the arm of this, or this mm -hmm. and that and the other. So now we have basic function or explanations but that's not the entirety of the body of Christ the entirety of the body of Christ can it be actually spoke out the entirety of the body of Christ yeah. you mean and, as a number well in its segmented oh, the head, I see. the okay. arm, the foot, the tone the, you know, Jonesy or we're not even supposed to look at it like that at all sure, that's the only way we're supposed to look at it but we are taught, trained control to see it from man's definition of it. Right. The only way we're going to see it from what you're describing is it's if we stick word. to God's yes. definition of it. Yes. The majority of the body of Christ doesn't realize the body of Christ. Josie, so, I go about doing my business the same way he does and the same way you do. You do what you're supposed to do because you enjoy doing it. We are benefited by it and we Amen. show our, our appreciation doing the little things that we can but we're, we're constantly in motion but we're we're just doing what has innately been given sure. as, <clears throat> as part of our components of, of who we are yes and then we know the scripture be all things to all men does that mean be every be, be every position in the body that you can no it's talking about men outside of the body you represent <clears throat> a an image that you can make a connection with them through. If you're talking to somebody who's a truck driver and you have an understanding of the life of truck drivers, then you are going to present the gospel to that man from a truck driver's perspective. Right. 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 If you're dealing with an ex-convict and you know you've had friends who've been in jail and come out and you have a knowledge of that type of life, you present the gospel to that individual from that perspective, somebody who's been through mm -hmm. the system. You wouldn't pre present the gospel from an intellectual perspective to somebody who's not on that level. Right. You so, come to that individual in a way in which that individual is going to receive right. and comprehend. That's mm -hmm. what, the way Jesus operates. You meet them where they are and take them to higher. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that, of course, is colored by, you have to say, our cooling, our ministry, our workings. All of these things, in other words, the way that he operates is based on his individualism, his uniqueness from the, the Lord's perspective, but also the classification of his membership to the body, which I think was yeah. where he was going uh, earlier. And to add to what you just now said, the Father has given me 
implements of temporary existence, so I can I can I, I can exist temporarily, and I have enough to share with my with my brothers. Praise the Lord. So you know, but it, it's not vast amounts, but it is. I'm doing what I can with what I've been given. Exactly. That's a bit, and that, that's exactly what you do. That's what he does. You know, we're all doing what we've been given and and making every people enriched with the small measure wise amounts mm. which turns into eternity which is in you can't calculate it but yes. It's, uh, yes it's such a wonderful plan i just wish we could convince other members Others. you're describing do what we can do or be what we can be is a better way of saying it and god will do the rest so from that tiny grain that we are aware of he then produces bushels you know it's sad and it really is sad that so few people in the body actually recognize what we're talking about and it proves they're going to read their bibles because first corinthians uh 12 will tell them <coughs> offices bodies gifts workings ministry. it will tell them but if they don't know it then it means they haven't spoken to their pastor recently that's the problem. When you read your Bible, the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to come up, you're going to bump heads with organized religion. Right. <clears throat> organized religion pays lip service to the scriptures, but they do not adhere to the scriptures. <clears throat> when they talk about the body of Christ, like we've heard, body of Christ is no big I, little you. We're all on a level playing field. Sure. Nobody is greater than anybody else. That's what they pay lip service to. Mm. But in the mega church society, you can't even come <laughs> into that elite <laughs> circle of pastors. Make an appointment. Yeah, because <clears throat> what is said does not line up with what's done. They don't make themselves available to the people that supposedly have been given to them to develop. Their concept of responsibility to their congregants is framed in their own uh, 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 comprehension of what a pastor is and what he does, mm -hmm. which is not what the scripture says. The scripture only mentions the word pastor maybe two times in the whole New Testament. A shepherd, and Jesus talked about a shepherd, is somebody that gives his life for the sheep. Yes. A hireling Indeed. is somebody that takes opportunity right. to advance himself by being a shepherd over the sheep. Number three, God is not looking at the pastor. Can I repeat that? God is not looking at the pastor the same way he's looking at a prophet, an apostle, or a teacher. Because the revelation offices are high above sure. the pastorate. Sure. And in that respect, organized religion has the cart before the horse. And they don't teach. If they taught, people wouldn't believe the word church means a building. They know every time it means a person. <coughs> it means a congregation. Mm -hmm. Where a church means way. gathering, congregation, uh, a grouping of individuals. So organized religion does not pay homage to the scriptures. They have their own priority system. In their own priority system, certain things are accepted and other things are not accepted. What's not accepted <clears throat> is for the individual to rise above the leadership. Yep. Well, the Bible, the scripture tells us the individual is limitless. He can go as high as he strives to, to go. go. Yeah, he's supposed to be encouraged By to go leadership. as high as he yes. can, possibly can. Yes. Doesn't happen in organized religion. Organized religion programs people to per perpetually sit under a man's teaching and leadership. <clears throat> Scripture encourages, yea, it, 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 demands that the individual pursue the path that the father has ordained for him to walk not what the church ordains for him to walk yes. i i recognized very early on when the holy spirit was 
leading me to underline verses. <laughs> and the underlying verses were related to principles, as opposed to we're going to read you know, Luke chapter 6 and then Luke chapter 7 and then Luke... No, I'm serious. <laughs> and it became clear to me that one, what I'm hearing from the pulpit is not what I'm hearing from the Holy Spirit as I'm... In it. So, hmm, why is this? <coughs> My pursuit of why is this revealed... <laughs> let me pay attention to let me pay attention to the word. You know, I don't I don't I don't need someone to you know come and tell me what Luke's chapter, uh, chapter six means. Organized religion does not prepare the individual for eternity. It doesn't prepare the individual for anything. Well, it prepares the individual to be a perpetual listener in a group. That's a prisoner. Yes, it prepares the individual not to think but to receive whatever his authority figure gives him. It's designed to keep the person limited never to question what he's received but just to accept what he's received because if you question what you receive then it's considered a threat to the leadership but in the scripture leadership encourages questions of course. encourages um things that you might not agree with right. so that you can sit down and analyze what's being said and come right. to a conclusion because <clears throat> the scripture is preparing the individual for eternity yes organized religion is preparing the individual for comfort zone and temporality exactly and uh it's so egregious as the the, the, the time that these people are going to have to give an account for what they did you just feel sorry. That's called growth and limitation thereof. Do you know how many times that someone has said to me mm. in absolute shock and disbelief, mm. you mean you don't believe what the pastor believes? So I believe what the Holy Spirit is telling me. <laughs> no, no one else is, is relevant as far as I'm concerned. I don't care how many people you bring along. That's what we, we study. This is so rare, Richard, so rare that we have groups like this being led by the Holy Spirit and actually growing as a result thereof. It has to do with how you perceive life. The scripture is written from God's perspective. Yes. Organized religion teaches from man's perspective. God says in his word, my thoughts are higher than your thoughts, than the heavens are of the, over the earth. If you're going to engage in pursuing the scripture from man's perspective, you're going to chain yourself to limitation. You're going to reach a point where you don't grow. You don't have a comprehension of Christianity. Organized religion has a distorted view of Christianity. <coughs> Their view of Christianity centers around one thing, salvation. That's the only thing that they have that's um, basically uh, <coughs> characteristic of, of value. They lead people into become, becoming born again, and that's where it starts, that's where it stops. Their view <coughs> is the goal is to get saved. The scriptures view is the beginning is getting saved and then you've only entered in to the doorway and you have this path mm -hmm. that you're walking on to infinity from that point the scripture from God's point of view diametrically opposite to organized religions point of view and <coughs> In that respect, a person who is an advocate of seminary life, of the leadership and organized religion, sees the scripture from a limitation, from a human perspective, mm -hmm. enters into eternity totally unprepared for the, the, the things that are happening. Heavenly society is forever going to be uh, unattainable to a person who goes through organized religion. 
because they don't have a concept. They don't have a preparation. Now turn to Ephesians, first chapter. <clears throat> on and on and on and on and on. You can see the scripture says one thing, and you compare it to organized religion, you see the failure of it to influence in a positive way the saint, the Christian. Ephesians is the first chapter, and <clears throat> we've done this several times, but we can see where it starts off. For instance, a person gets saved, first chapter, Twelve, starting verse 12 that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ that's a principle not to what what does it mean it means when you get saved you are now embarking on a path that is to glorify the Father to ultimately give Praise to the Father. Everybody that is born again is done so because the Father wants sons. He wants sons because the sons are going to give him much pleasure. Much pleasure, much joy. The sons are going to be his handiwork, masterpiece to the creation, and the creation is going to praise the Creator because they see what the Creator has done to the sons. The this is what Paul is talking about, that we should, we, should be to the praise of his glory. It starts where? First trusting in Christ. Mm -hmm. Trust in Christ in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom after that you believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When you believe, you become born again. You enter into the family of God as a son of God. You enter into sonship, you are sealed the sealing is the entrance of the Holy Spirit into the life of the individual, called the earnest of the Spirit, down payment of the Spirit. The first <clears throat> partial uh, payment, which declares that you are God's property, that there's more to come. But it's contingent upon the person's progression after that. He talks about Verse 14, which is the earnest down payment of our inheritance until, until, until redemption of the purchased possession. Purchased possession. <clears throat> what does that mean? It means that you have been bought. The seal shows that you have been paid for. Until <clears throat> the purchase. What is that? That's the rapture. That's the adoption. That's the glorification. Until that happens, you have the earnest of the Spirit operating in you. Nothing more. At the time of glorification, you get the fullness. <clears throat> a down payment. When you, when you put a down payment on something, it means that ultimately you're going to be paying more for that item. That there's more going to be forthcoming that pertains to that thing that you've gotten partially. The fullness, not to say we haven't been fully paid for, but it means that we haven't been fully, <coughs> uh, the, thing, the, the, the thing that's been purchased has not been fully Realized. operative okay. in that respect. Mm. God does that for a reason. And in that respect, <coughs> which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of His glory. So He's going to be glorified when the fullness of the Holy Spirit manifests in His sons. <laughs> He's going to be greatly glorified, greatly <coughs> uh, 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 enhanced in His <coughs> pleasure. But notice what it says. <coughs> Verse 
16, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. This is not taught to a person that's saved. They tell you get saved, you get saved, you get born again, and instead of incorporating this all-important aspect, what do you do when you're born again? You pursue... You pursue the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's the only way you can grow. The spirit of wisdom and knowledge has to be there to direct the individual. It's not encouraged. It's not even faintly alluded to. Just the opposite. Organized religion tells you you've got everything you have, you need now. Uh, read your Bible, that way you'll find out more and more and more. No, don't study. Just, yeah, and God will lead you into where wherever it is he's directing you. No, he won't. Because unless you pursue it, it's not going to come to you. They get an inf in in inference that the person is going to receive it all. That's why you have the problem you have. Yes. People expect it's going to come to them automatically. <clears throat> why isn't it happening Maybe I'm not saved, or maybe it was wrong, or maybe this, or maybe mm -hmm. that. Then I'm encouraged to understand how this thing works. <clears throat> Everything we have, we have to fight for. We live in a world in which it's number one, it's fallen. Number two, the people in it <clears throat> are totally ignorant of the truth of everything that pertains to this world and this life. They don't know their past. They don't know their present. They don't know their future. They don't know their purpose. They know absolutely nothing. Not explained to them. Paul goes into great depth to make the, the Christian understand what he's to do, where he's to start from, what he's to pursue. He pursues the, wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Why? Verse 18, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. The spirit of wisdom and revelation will open the eyes. Mm -hmm. You don't have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, you're going to walk through this world blind which 99.99% of saints do, they're blind <clears throat> until the end. And they go into eternity just as blind as they were when they were in this life. Are the saints who are blind just as blind as those who are not saints? Yeah, well, no, no, I won't say that. Mm -hmm. If you've got the spirit in you, you're gonna know a little something. Right, just a touch, a touch more. But you're not gonna know. <clears throat> they talk about babes. Mm -hmm. They're going to live this life as a baby, a toddler, which is um, an inch above being not, not being saved at all. But uh, they're going to stumble, run into walls, uh, fall down, be stamped flat, crushed, disappointed, ignorant, the whole shot. Not, not having any direction. They're going to spend their, spend their life going in circles around, yeah. until they leave this place consistently going from one crisis to another, having a, a guilt trip being put on them every time they sin, uh, questioning uh, why they sinned, and not understanding dual nature, not understanding why they have all this hardship that they have to deal with, not understanding the sufferings of Christ. It's not explained to them, they're babes. Paul is talking here about <clears throat> in order to start off with an understanding that leads you to the overcomer status, you have got to incorporate certain things in your life. Yes. As a babe, you understand that you are to pursue, you are to pursue truth. Through the spirit of wisdom and revelation, you get direction. You get encouragement, you get strength. Comes with the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> then he goes on, you will have your eyes open, understanding being enlightened, 
that she may know, that she may know what is the hope of his calling. In other words, what you've been called to do. Well, this is an elder. This is a priest. He's being prepared for these positions here and now. You understand what it is that you're heading for when you get there, a place around the throne, either on an, uh, a throne as an elder or in the temple as a priest. You'll understand the division of authority. <clears throat> You'll understand that you also have the ability to pursue the bridal position. It's all going to be explained to the individual through the scripture. And then he goes on. <clears throat> You'll know your inheritance. You have an inheritance waiting for you. If you're a priest, your inheritance is going to include the estate which is going to be your headquarters from which you will express the ability to judge and teach the creation. Uh, multitudes beat a hasty path to your doorway wanting to um, elicit your aid, your knowledge, your understanding. <coughs> You'll be going forth to impart to different segments of the creation because it's ongoing <coughs> functions that are needed to be incorporated. Mm. Uh, angelic preparation for the time of uh, the climaxing, the tribulation period, second coming. You're going to be preparing the creation for these things. Inculcating them with an understanding of the age to come and their place in it, their position in it. All this is in the hands of the prototokas. They don't know. They may have a certain con con concept, but God has kept it from them. Who doesn't know? Who's, who's, who's a good the angels, the, the creation. Angel. Okay. Okay. They don't know. Sure. You see this consistently. Turn to First Peter. <clears throat> First Peter, first chapter, <clears throat> verse 9, starting in verse 9. Receiving the end of your faith, this is the conclusion, the salvation of your souls, deliverance. Here he's talking about the adoption. Of which salvation, deliverance, the prophets have inquired, and search diligently who prophesies of the grace that should come unto you. In other words, the New Testament prophets, after the Holy Spirit's poured out, <clears throat> they step into their office under the anointing. The first thing they began to do is to search the meaning, how this, how this uh, pertains to the body of Christ. What's the body of Christ's place in all of this? The Holy Spirit began to give them revelation. Verse 11. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ, Holy Spirit, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. <clears throat> so it's talking about the prophets search diligently the focus, the function, the purpose of the body of Christ, they began to receive revelation knowledge about the sufferings that the body of Christ would have to go through and ultimately the direction the body of Christ should take. <clears throat> then it goes on. Unto whom, the prophets, it was revealed. So the prophets received the revelation he says, not unto themselves, but also unto us. They did minister the things which are now reported unto you. The prophets received revelation 
the sufferings of Christ, the destiny of Christ, they imparted it to the apostles and to the church. This is what he's referring to. Unto whom it was revealed that not only unto ourselves, not only unto themselves, but unto us that administer the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. So he's talking about they imparted to the apostles who are the overseers of the church. The church imparts it to others that are coming in so they have an understanding. <clears throat> And then the last ones that receive are the angels, mm -hmm. which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Expect more revelation. Understand that you're going to receive more and more understanding so you will know what to do, what direction to take. That's what Peter is talking about. Mm -hmm. He said, we all owe it all to the, to the prophets. Why? <clears throat> well, the Revelation office is a apostle, prophet, and teacher. Yes. But the only ones that have the calling to be open, to spend their time receiving the revelation is the prophet. The apostle has to be the overseer of the church, mm -hmm organizing it, ministering it. The teacher has to be available to teach what he's received from the apostle to the churches. So they're busy engaged in preparing the body. Only the, only the, uh, the prophet is open to receive revelation that he can give to them. But the prophet can also be the teacher. Oh sure, they are. But teaching is secondary. If they don't I see what you if mean. they're not open totally to revelation, right. then the them? church loses direction. Sure. Sure. You have to have that. And you see examples of that in the book of Acts. Uh, <clears throat> prophets came down from Jerusalem. Agabus uh, talks about things that are going to happen so the church can be prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, Paul, Agabus tells Paul, hey, look, when you go where you're going to go, understand this is going to happen to you, that's going to happen to you. Paul's an apostle, uh, Agabus is a prophet, but Agabus has received the revelation that he can pass on to Paul, so Paul can be prepared for what he's got to deal with. Mm. This is the way the Father has organized the church at this, this at point. At this point, yeah. Uh, if everybody took their time in getting, and the, the apostles could get revelation as well, they do. <clears throat> but then the church would suffer as a result because they wouldn't have time to pass on what was needful. Revelation knowledge, we just read that in Ephesians, the spirit of wisdom and revelation is the engine that drives the direction that the church is going to go to. Yes. So we can see that from the organized religion leadership perspective, even if they do read, uh, even if they do receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation, because they are not evidently being driven by the Holy Spirit, it's an intellectual exercise, they won't be able to grow to the, the, to the point necessary to actually do the things that you're talking about. They're not open to receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation, number one. Number two, they're not encouraged to. Number three, the offices of revelation have been totally neutralized mm. in organized religion. That's why the pastor is supreme office. Right. Everything's turned around. Uh, they're not encouraged. As a matter of fact, you're discouraged. The majority mainline... <laughs> Denominations don't even believe in apostles and prophets as a current office. They will tell you it was only 12 apostles. When they passed away, that everything went into a new direction. Yeah, we, we heard that before. And you would say that, where do you find that in the scripture? There's a God who does not change, who tells you, I've established the office of apostle and prophet in the body of Christ until the time that the last apostle died, and then I'm going to change it to uh, organized religion. Where you find that in the scripture? That's totally contrary. That's heretical teaching. Sure. Of the most of the of the nth degree, heresy. These people are out here walk, walking around talking about um, cessationism, revisionism, stuff that has no relevance to the scripture whatsoever. It's man-made doctrine. 
They don't even identify with the body of Christ. They identify with men. I'm a Calvinist. I'm a Lutheran, a Presbyterian, a Baptist. They're they're they're, they're identifying with man-made organizations. Nothing to do with. Paul got on the, the Corinthian church about that. He says, uh, <clears throat> matter of fact. Act, turn over there, First Corinthians, and and you get an impression of what they would think about organized religion today, because it's the same criminal act of <laughs> sin that was <clears throat> based there before First Corinthians, third chapter. Says, Verse 4, <clears throat> For uh, while one saith, I am of Paul, another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? So if you, st if you stand there and you talk about, <clears throat> well, I, I, I uh, sit under the teaching of Pastor Gino Jennings, or I sit under the teaching of T.D. Jake, or I sit under the teaching of, um, of uh, John MacArthur, Paul would say the same thing to you. Who are they? <clears throat> Who then is Paul? Who is Apostle? Who's Luther? Who's Calvin? Yes. Who's Zwingli? Who are these? But ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave unto every man. That's a, assuming that the individual is a, a, a committed Christian to begin with and not some false teacher. The best, the best, even if he's a committed individual, Paul would say, so what? What has that got to do with tea in China? <clears throat> Verse 6, I planted, Apollos watered, and God gave the increase. So you would say that man that you're identifying with, the best you could say is he watered or he planted. He only gave what he received. What are you putting him up on a pedestal for? Reading a Bible that's got his name uh -huh. on it. Oh, Paul would ooh, Paul would have a fit with organized religion. Then he goes on. <clears throat> now he that planteth and he that watereth are one. Every man should receive his own reward according to his own labor. What is he saying? This puts down pastorates, pastors. He's saying the most that a leader should be is that they worked together to bring people to Christ. Yes. <coughs> and they got no justifiable reason for saying this is my church. <laughs> uh, that's my teaching. They'd shoot it all down in a hot minute. I've noticed that um, the leadership who speaks against people pointing out these things mm. as we do of course and reading and identifying with the way that the, the father has structured the church mm -hmm. are called Mormons Jehovah's Witnesses <laughs> and various other <laughs> cult <laughs> you're a cult, cult. <laughs> three stooges <laughs> yeah yes. verse 9 for we are laborers together with God you're God's husbandry, you're God's building. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereupon. So where do you have a mega church pastor saying, okay, I'm just uh, here giving you, but brother so-and-so over here, he's just as important as I am, because he's, he's got a gift that can help you on the path. Where I can't. Yeah, I've never heard of it. You never, you never uh, will. I never will. <laughs> so the, the, the individuals that are not patterning themselves after what you read here, either this scripture is wrong or somebody is opening themselves up for a grievous uh, uh, time when they stand before the Lord. Jeremiah 23. No. It's coming. Yep. Notice what it says in verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. I'm going to repeat that. Every man's work 
shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. For it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort is. If you have a pastor who spent all this time teaching congregation, according to what we just read, is going to come a time of testing. Yes. What was taught is going to be tried by fire. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't hold up, the individual <laughs> that inspired it is going to be held accountable. Yeah. Going yeah. to be held accountable. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But notice what it also says. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. In other words, <clears throat> he's going to have nothing to show for it <coughs> except his faith foundation, which is going to be tested by fire. So that means this individual at best can expect life on the new earth. Yeah. He'll never see heaven. Because he's got no works. Therefore he's got no reward. Only those with rewards will make heaven. Hmm. You're sure? The Bible, the Bible says. So if I'm saved, I'm not immediately going to heaven? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't think so. Praise the I wouldn't, Lord. I wouldn't hang my hat on suddenly be whisked away in the rapture. I don't think I would either. This is just so extraordinary. Yeah, as each day continues with our studies, the most basic concepts become a testament to the opposite of the difference between the world system and the spiritual system. The church, I'm sorry to say this, is part of the world. Is this an extension of the world? It's an extension of the world. It really is. That's, that's, that's a terrifying conclusion to come to. By virtue of the fact you got maybe a handful of people from the time the churches are founded, relatively speaking, sure. that are really going to make it. Sure. That, that's mind-boggling. So that whole concept of a church within the church has to be, has to be real because the mm -hmm. Father's yeah. uh, uh, structure has to exist within yeah, the church what it to, is. You know, to whatever They're degree. scattered. As he talks about that. Scattered you here, scattered you there. Now I'm going to gather you. Praise the Lord. I'm reminded of the story of the king who makes a wedding feast for his son. He invites various people. One of them says, I've just got married. You know, I'm, I, I can't, you know, they've all made their various excuses. But then one, one of them comes in wearing a wedding uh, a dress, which he wasn't supposed to wear because... Evidently, he didn't answer the RSVP or something along those lines, which reminds me of the. He didn't the, the, get called. He didn't get. Okay. He, okay. He, he did get called. But he said but no. But the father said, "You couldn't come before. That's it. Well, right. He comes oh. anyway." Right now, <coughs> after the coming anyway, the 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 king or the father tells his servants, <laughs> "Cold, remove the wedding dress and beat." <laughs> Beat him. You know I love that part. <laughs> Beat him. This is very interesting because the same people who are trying to look good in your eyes. That are ignoring the still small ignoring voice. The, that's them. Yes. See, that's interesting that you would bring that out because, see, I knew that I had to speak out what I did. And then you put the, the punctuation to what I'm speaking mm. out. I forgot about that. And then, well, when he brings it out, mm. that, you know, my God. And, you know, that realization that we well, you already know it because you're not realizing it. the realization that we're, we're, we're having becomes more and more pronounced as we grow because we are being the incoming reality becomes more intense to the very people that we're talking about because they chose not to learn anything they don't know and they become the Luke 21 uh, 25 or 26 men's hearts you know that, that's that Extraordinary. 